is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Uh, hello, welcome to another episode of the uh, Bristol Flyers podcast. I'm Joel Osborne, he is Sam Hardy. Sam, it is definitely not as hot in here as it was uh, last week. It was an absolute sauna in here. You look back at the videos from last week, we're literally shiny as they come. Yeah. Uh, bit better this week, but yeah. I mean, it's still hot. But it's still a bit shiny. Actually, yeah, look at that. Literally <laughs> shiny ass. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely got a face for radio. I mean, that's why we got there for the white polos today as well, because uh, don't want any sweat patch happenings. I don't know. Yeah, they're not, oh, it's real, aren't they? They're not there. We're good. <laughs> they are there. You just can't see them. Um, this is our fourth episode now in the new studio. I said well, it's episode 18, I think. I butchered that last week. I said episode. I said the wrong episode. This is episode 18 now. Flipping heck. Uh, our fourth in a row in the new studio, new season. Uh, so thanks to everyone tuning in so far who've been watching on YouTube or listening on podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, make sure you keep the ratings and reviews coming in. It helps us move up the podcast charts. Um, and leave a comment on YouTube as well. If you're watching on YouTube, do leave a comment. We'll read them out. Read all of the comments and any hot topics we will uh, raise here on the podcast. Well, we read them all as long as they're PC. That's what we're in it, Joel. <laughs> yeah, I've got, yeah, of course. I've got, <laughs> of course. Um, coming up in today's episode, uh, we're joined by a man who needs uh, no introduction. He's got biceps bigger than most people's faces. <laughs> it's none other than Malcolm Delpech. Malcolm, how's it going? Oh, I like that. That was a hell of an intro. But yeah, I'm doing great, Joel. It's a, this is amazing amazing setup i mean obviously i've seen some of the podcast episodes but being in here and like seeing like how you got to come along and you know progressed and leveled up obviously it's been this is amazing setup and excited yeah it has uh we have leveled up over the summer you, you get the brief note from uh jelani and leslie who came on the other yeah, week. yeah yeah they gave me a, a brief little play-by-play and they also said they were gonna add some questions in there whether or not they'll we'll, you'll be able to read them out <laughs> that's it's yet to be seen but i'm excited for this yeah i can get i can confirm we did get some interesting mailbag questions <laughs> in the uh, mailbag this week uh we've managed to grab you on a, a rare wednesday afternoon because normally you are playing bucks for you yeah aren't you? yeah so we have a uh, like every, basically every wednesday um we have a university game and so this is I'm not there for this game because uh, Friday Saturday are both back to back games and so um, we have like a little agreement uh, with a, a university coach kind of just like you know just load management because obviously I do play a lot of minutes and so it's just uh, for a weekend like this it's just like it's just not going to be in my best interest to be playing this log that many minutes and so in the weeks prior like on a game on a weekend where we only have one game um for the, on the weekend then go off i can go crazy have a little fun and then on game on weekends where we have two games then depending on whether we have a day in between then i might be on um uh, load management so i'll just have like maybe only play 20 minutes or something like that and so but yeah so this weekend it wasn't able to happen but Corey samuels and nabuka they're currently on that way game that we have today, so hopefully they can bring it home for us. So you're like Kawhi Leonard, right, with your uh, load management? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, something <laughs> like that. Something like that. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not as uh, youthful as Corey. Corey is an energizer bunny who can just doesn't matter how how many minutes he plays, he's gonna give you 100. percent um, And so I think uh, I think they're gonna be in good shape to this um, for tonight, and so hopefully they can bring it home for us. Yeah. Well, you didn't draw the short straw because uh, VJ and Leslie and Jelani they're all at half term holiday camps right now, and you're yeah, here on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're doing their community <laughs> service, which is obviously great, and uh, but I do think I'm probably having a little bit more fun, uh, so <laughs> I'm excited, I'm happy, no complaints for me. Uh, I want to talk about some of those uh, uh, so highlights we've seen coming out of the UE Jets uh, Instagram <laughs> account. There was uh, uh, yeah. got a couple of posters, oh, there was one player in particular yeah. of this guy. Are we, I think, are we looking to say one right now? The, the guy that inbounds the ball straight yeah, to you. Yeah, that was you, tough, that was tough. You just yam it on him, <laughs> and then you, I think you just handed him the ball back. Yeah, I was. Yeah, that was. That's the thing about UE basketball. I think that it's just one of the things. I think Corey would. Corey Samuels would probably attest to this as well. It's just like being BBL players. I think you kind of there's a, a certain of IQ, basketball IQ that not everyone. Not to and this is no knock, but like I do. <laughs> <laughs> the reality is just that you're you're playing professionally, and that just can't compare to whatever level that you're playing below that. And so. You know, you get these. You get a lot of chance to make these plays. Like Corey Samuel gets all of these. Most people see like Corey warming up, uh, and you see him. He's a high flyer, but you don't necessarily see a lot of in-game dunks there at the pro level when we play these BBL games. But at university, he's just having his way with these guards. And so, um, and then obviously in the play that you mentioned, like you know, I just got a steal off an of inbound, and uh, I dunked it. And obviously, it was an away. It was a away game too. It was in London, and um, the 
their fans were just like talking, chirping, chirping, chirping. The, they, these people were just chirping and talking the whole entire game. And I was just like, all right. And so I got the dunk. And like, I see the ref. That's that's what I was more so concerned about. Because the game at this point, the game was still relatively close. And so I see the ref and I'm just like, I'm feeling the type of way. I got to let this dude feel me. <laughs> so I gave him the ball. And you just, I think it wasn't even the handoff that like killed it. That for me, at least, is the way he just looked at the, ski, looked at the seal and he just like, dang. I just got pumped on and he gave me the ball back and then he took it you know so he didn't like slap it away like he just took it and just like and his teammate came in gave him a little loving tap on the back I'm just like yes sucker love that <laughs> do, do, do you find that like a lot of players who play against you at Yui are like uh, sort of like oh this is my chance to prove myself against BDL yeah, opposition and and I think and I've and if I was them I would be in the same I would have the same mentality I think that you know, if you're playing against that, anyone I love, and I think it's going to be even, we're going to experience a little bit of that, like when we play against some of these London teams, where they have some former NBA players, and you know, you have that chip on your shoulder, like I'm not, I'm not going to get punked by this player, regardless of whatever league he's playing, and regardless of where he's coming from. Like I need to compete, and so in some cases, like you may end up playing your best game, but in that case, you may end up getting dunked on. So mm. it's tough. <laughs> it's so funny. I mean, Corey had a couple. He had the uh, the unbelievable putback. Yeah, he? yeah, yeah. He had a great putback. You ever you know he's a very animated individual when he gets these highlight plays. And so, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's, I loved seeing Corey just having fun out there on the court at, uh, at UE. The yeah. other one was that um, it's, it, they switched onto him and he's just, he's just shouting, hey, mismatch, mismatch. And yeah. then the ball and he hits the <laughs> yeah, three. Yeah, he hits the three. Face. And it's tough. It's so tough. I'm just like, you don't, you don't want that. You don't want to get that. You don't want the audio to catch that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, this bad the day he scores on you and just like <laughs> he just puts you in, he puts you in your hole. That's <laughs> tough. How many um what's your win loss record looking like so far with well, Huey then? Currently we're undefeated. We've played three games. This game that we're that I'm not currently at right now would be our fourth. Um but yeah, we're currently undefeated. We're on a really good way. I think all the games that we won have been by like a 10, 15 point margin. Mm. And so, um well actually that's the our most recent game in Borman if we blew them out. But mm. Uh, yeah, we're, we're winning comfortably, and so hopefully, like I said, hopefully we can. Even though we're going to be a little bit shorter staff, hopefully we can still get it done. I think the scout is that they are not as difficult of a team that we played recently. But uh, yeah, right now we're on running ways. Everyone's happy, and so we just got to keep it up. Um, former Bristol Flyers player Josh Rogers has been stepping up in a big, big way. He's mm. been, dude's just automatic. It kind of missed, you know, in some way I'm just like, you sure you don't want to come back? You know, this this for a ten day contract or something like this. Yeah, just but a couple of games. Just a couple like, of games. I'm sure it wouldn't be too hard to, to you know convince Coach Capulis maybe just uh, just the experiment. But uh but yeah he's he's amazing for us. This dude is just having a blast. He honestly looks like he's playing on the playground. It's it's ridiculous uh to see that. It's it's amazing. I'm obviously happy for him. Mm -hmm. I I couldn't um Obviously, we played, I've said it before on the podcast, we played university basketball, and I, the first time I came up against someone like you, um, massive, just dunking on everyone, I um, tried to block him. He came up to dunk <laughs> on me. I went to try and block him. He literally jumped, like, probably I was in level with his waist. That's probably where my, where my <laughs> hand tough. was. That's and, tough. And, uh, and it was my fifth foul. I fouled him. It was my fifth <laughs> foul. I had to go sit down on the bench. I, I, I can't lie. There's nothing worse than getting dunked on and then subbed out afterwards. We oh, just yeah. sit there and just brood about where you went wrong. You got to think about it on the bench. <laughs> yeah, just have, give it a good thought. Like, that's tough. away. That's tough. But that's that was, tough. Uh, I gave up after that. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are there a lot of uh, players that play uh, BBL and Bucks basketball as well at the same time? Uh, for Flyers, yes. And I think a lot of it just has to do with the kind of partnership that we have. Like, the U is one of our sponsors. And so, um, but I think last year there were, like, there was a couple players who did that on Newcastle's front and then... I think also in for London. I know as Leicester well. and Loughborough are very yeah, yeah. tight knit as well, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. So that, so I haven't we haven't played anyone who's also plays a uh, uh, professional basketball. Additionally, like there's some guys who play Division Two. Mm. Um, I don't personally know them, but um, I yeah I can't really not so much of at least the way they're playing at least I mean mm. some of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine I imagine it's best. <laughs> Didn't, didn't quite catch that actually. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for the best. <laughs> um, how, how are you? Uh, so, so, what is it you're studying at UE as well? Then, what, what, what do you study? So, I'm doing. Uh, I'm getting my master's in marketing, and so it's a part time um, arrangement, and so it just ends up being a two year, and so that's part. That's uh, one of the reasons, like, I wanted to come back because I wanted to finish my degree. Um, 
I tried. They initially, they I was on like the full the the one the one year arrangement, and I was just like, I'm just so out of touch. Like you know, I think if I graduated from university back like got my undergrad and then immediately got into my master's here, then I feel like I was I still would have had like the the tools, the mental fortitude, and all that stuff just to like bang it out and still have that work life balance. But like I mean, I have, I've been at that point when I started my master's, I've been out of school for like like almost four years, at least four years, and then this year would have been, the, that year would have been the fifth. No, I was out of school for three years, and then that year would have been the fourth. Yeah. And so I just didn't, I'm just out of it. So mm. it's just like, and that's a thing, like you can't, like getting, if you're just out of school for so long, and then you, you're expected to like have like a full, full course workload, it's like, it's tough. And so for me, I just thought that I didn't want, um, obviously I have my priority, I mean, I'm here to play basketball. And so I don't want, my university life to get in the way of my basketball life and then at some area of my life that's important it just starts faltering so I think I thought the part-time ruin the way I see it it's been like the best option for me so then I could still give 100% in the areas that matter and still get my work done in the classroom. Because I can imagine um, pe people don't realize probably being a professional athlete is obviously taxing on the body but I imagine absolutely taxing on, on, your, on, your, on your mind as well. Not yeah yeah I think it's important to have, it's important to have like a work-life balance because like I think when you're just playing if you're only doing at, doing sports or just being a professional basketball player, you do end up having a good amount of free time just because, uh, like, obviously you can't practice for eight hours every single day. That's just that's just bad business. But um, when you have that on top of university and you're, you're go, expected to go to classes and then do your readings and stuff like that, it like it's a lot. And so like having uh, having that time where you can just kind of just kick back and just breathe. It's just like so important, at least for me, like I've, other people, some people can thrive in those, you know, nonstop environments, but at least for me, like I like, I need at least like I have, have like an hour in a day where I can just kind of just like breathe a little bit and not have to, you know, just kick my feet up. And so for me, I think like this arrangement, just having a part-time arrangement, like where the responsibilities in the classroom aren't as taxing or as necessary, just end up working in my, in my favor. Yeah, I think it's good that athletes as well are sort of thinking now about their yeah, life yeah, after basketball definitely. because you only have that sort of what is like maybe like ten year, maybe more, just more than ten year window yeah, playing nah. pro basketball. And I then think that's so important. I think that you know it's as athletes, especially. I mean, I, I think it's getting better now, but you, I think like when at least in my when I first started consider going basketball full time, like you hear so many stories about people who just like they play basketball and then they get injured or yeah. They have a career ending injury or, you know, they, they just, you know, they naturally retire and then they're just like, now what? And so, like, for me, like, I've never, you know, I'm, I think that's a lot that I had to do with my parents as well. Like, you don't just want to be just like a one trick pony. Like, even if you, this is what you want to do, do your basketball, do whatever sport that you want to do, do whatever. And this is just in life. Um, do whatever you want to do, but have, you know, start getting, so, especially when you're working profession, that's like a, where it has like a decay life, like where you know you can't do it for for the rest of your life like you have to be you know start thinking about what you're doing so like i think that getting this master's degree is like where is my way of just like preparing for life after basketball yeah it's massively important I've got to give a massive shout out to to ue bristol as well of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah sam and i are former students there they used to sponsor the podcast they're big partners of our, uh, ours now um I, I say used to sponsor the podcast because right now we don't have a sponsor sam and, and you're on the commercial team at bristol sport so what can you tell us? Can we get a sponsor on board for the Crystal <laughs> Flyers podcast? The trouble is, no, I am in marketing. Maybe I can pull some strings in it. <laughs> the trouble is, I meet all these commercial partners, and then they're like, "Nah, if you're on it, we don't want you." <laughs> like, nah, we're not That's sponsoring tough. that. That's tough. <laughs> um, <laughs> Malcolm, how are you finding your second spell back in the BBL? Because of course, your second full season with the Flyers, but then uh, some people might not realize you did that first spell with us in 2018. It was like 12 games or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that, you know, during the com after the Commonwealth Games, you know, like. Some those players went away and then me and my brother stepped in um just being back in england overall and just being in the bbl has been great and i think that come when i first did the when i first did that 12 game spell i think that you know not to say i wasn't ready but i feel like and i think a lot of part of it did have to do with the fact that we were just filling in uh, temporarily, realistically, the spaces like Dan and Dozy, and I think who else? It's was Mike it? Vigor as well. Yeah, yeah, we were just, we were temporarily filling those shoes of those guys, but so the, once it came back, it was really just playing, just like you know, a couple minutes here and there. Um, but then coming back this year, and then it, you know, Coach Capulis, and I think part of that had to do with my brother being with the Bristol Flyers for about point three years, and so you, Coach kind of had like an expectation or like how they wanted where he wanted me to fit in the flyer system and my role in the team and so I didn't necessarily have to like fight 
not I didn't have to fight for minutes because obviously I don't come in here thinking I'm, I'm just going to come in here to do that. So I believe you have to earn it. But I feel like I had already had an idea what the role was. And like coach already had this level of trust. He had kind of seen my brother. So in a way, we know we're twins. We play similar, similarly, similarly. Whoa. Tough. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so like, I think that me already having that prior relationship and then seeing my brother play and how that system works, I feel like it, it just made the transitions like so smooth. And so coming in this year, I feel like, um, especially not even just like overall as far as like Commonwealth, I'm just like come, being a returner. Um, I think that it's just it's been great. Obviously, we're on, we're on winning ways currently. Uh, we're five and one, and um, really wish we should. Really wish we were six and one. Cause Sheffield played Newcastle and they punked them, and yeah. I'm just like, yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll get on to that yeah, game a little yeah, bit later but, on. But uh, yeah, besides getting back to the point, I just think that it's, it's been great. It's been a great transition. I think that we're gelling really smoothly. Um, in some ways, I think that we're kind of being a returner, and I think have, having me and Mike, who like you know. Mike being the the uh, the great point guard that he is, and me being like kind of uh, the center who kind of just like holds down defensive end. Um, I think it's just been great, and I think everybody's really just bought into our system, and so um, it's, it's been a great experience thus far. Mm. Have you noticed like a lot of change off the court or on the court between the club between your first spell? in 2018 and then your second your you know your return to the club last season has there a lot of change been off the court i know, I know it's only like a short off, sp- like off the court as in like yeah like just the way i just seeing how the club's grown in the between those two years in terms of the fan base the direction the club oh yeah in. yeah as far as the fan base yeah i can't i mean i think a lot of that has to do with the success that we had last season um you know there was i mean our coach was harping on harping about it like basically like after our season was finished and we had like all those meetings we had like that uh that final like meet and greet sort of thing at the village hotel and like one of the things he was like always like talked about like yo like there's a lot of momentum people are loving basketball bristol basketball and bristol basketball in bristol is growing and then we have like the ashton they're building like the new facility for ashton gates and so like everything is just coming in is happening at the right time the success is happening at the right time and so for, you know, I think that that's just been great. And so like even when you look at our games, you know, now we're allowed to meet with the fans after games and stuff like that. And it's obviously it's nicer that we're winning these games as well. And so like there's just such a, a lot of passion um, off the court. And you can you do sort of feel that. And like it's kind of like a badge of honor in a way, I guess. So it's been great. Mm. I know last year was the first year that you and your brother Marcus were playing on different teams. You yeah, know, you've yeah, always yeah. been on the same team throughout your whole playing career yeah what was yeah. that experience like last year in that first game where you guys were playing against each other yeah i mean that's yeah i think that i, I think for me my brother and i think it's you know you kind of do have to approach it that way at least that's how i approach it like you, i don't you know you don't try to get too high or low but you're that's my brother and so and he played here and so i think that's just two layers of things that just like makes it a little bit more such a personal game um and so the three game i feel like the more our biggest thing is like i, I refuse to I don't care. I mean, I, I mean, I told I told Corey this like kind of to decide, but I was like, realistically, I don't care win or lose, but I refuse to let my brother have a better game than me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so at least that's how that's how I approached the first game, and that's uh, and I ended up having a significantly better game than him that game. Um, and so, <laughs> so with, but after the last two games, very much just like a sort of team thing, and then we ended up beating Sheffield like. That out of the three games we played, them, we beat them two times, and so um, that I think the it's just it's honestly I take those opportunities to play against my brothers just as a blessing, and then we you know we beat Sheffield again this year already, and so I think that you know having a brother in the league, and I think some the the, the two twin, I don't think his brother is playing this year, but the, the dude out of uh, Leicester, the. Whelan twins, yeah, Jordan and, so, and Pat Whelan, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Jordan's so I, playing in Div One now. I think. Yeah, he's playing yeah. Div One, but even those, so I think that they could probably relate to it as well. But like, just playing when you ever playing as a brother, it's like it's like nah, like I'm about to give you work, <laughs> like this is just and like you may not even vocalize it, but in your head, it's just like I, this, this is my my flesh and blood. Like I gotta just let them know who's the who's the big brother, whether regardless of age, you're gonna be my my little brother today. <laughs> and so, I think that uh, yeah. It's just a, it's, a, it's an amazing experience being able to share the court with my brother, whether, even though we were on a different team now. Yeah, Sam and I were chatting last week, well, last week, week before on the podcast, and we were saying, uh, well, we were saying that I feel like Marcus needs a bigger role in that Sheffield team because he's coming off the bench, there's three bigs there, and we yeah. don't know what he can do. I think, and like, Sheffield definitely, I mean, their way that, yeah, they, they kind of went the opposite direction of Bristol there because I feel like we doubled down and, like, as far as looking for guards, and so we, we picked up a lot of more 
we picked up a lot more guards, and then for Sheffield, they just doubled down on their bigs. I mean, they have, I guess they already had Marcus and Coke, so they kind of had a one-two punch. Yeah. But then um, they added Oak and Yemi. Oak and Yemi, and so having three bigs who like, I guess at, I mean the, the way that I see that they're that they're managing their substitution, managing minutes, it's just like they kind of just whoever's having a good game, they're gonna let them get the bulk of the minutes, and then whoever. And then whoever the la- the other two big, they just kind of work their way around them, and just getting it in and get the, the the main big. But any one of those big could have a good game. Like uh, when um, like I was watching their, new- their game against Newcastle, and Coke had like um, had like a really good game against. Uh, he was just giving uh, the foe work, and so he just let him let him work, mm-hmm. he let him go to work, and the dude finished like with twenty five points or whatever the case was. And so I think that's just how they do. Whoever's having a good game, whoever is doing doing bits have go off have fun and so it is tough because like those, any one of those three bigs can have minutes and so you kind of just gotta you have to play well if you want to see the court really and so um but yeah i do kind of feel that and i told my brother too and i think also they're very they're also a very guard heavy heavy offense like they don't want to feed play through the bigs that's what that's my synopsis they don't really play through the bigs all that much they just want to use them for screens mm-hmm. and so um yeah it's tough i guess it's not the same system it's just just a, um, the nature of the trade, I guess. Yeah, I want to know what the, the what the family WhatsApp groups like whenever you guys play <laughs> each other. Is it popping? Is it? Yeah, back and yeah. Forth I think every that? time we we have a we have a, inter, a family international group chat, and it's just like my my mom, my dad, a couple aunts, aunts and uncles, my sister who's living in Japan, and so we just have, every time uh, those games are, are coming around the horizon, it's always like, all right, best of luck. That my mom does her due diligence to wish us both luck. And so, you know, just let them know that, you know, we're, we're also what happens. We just want you to play well and da 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 <laughs> Doesn't matter who wins yeah, or loses, yeah, but, but really it does. <laughs> yeah, really it does, and at least as far as me and my brother are concerned. And so I think that after those games happen and, you know, the, the winner wins, um, you know, you just let them know, you little, add a little cheeky comment in there and just be like, ah, you got that work. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> so, so who do they support then? Who, do they, are they just calling it straight down the middle or are they favoring one I mean, team over the other? I mean, they, I mean, they have to. I think the, what... Yeah, they'll they'll never outrightly say like we're voting for Bristol, but like I said, and I said this uh, before, like to my coach, and I was like um, we, last year, and I was saying like Raleigh is they have more Bristol gear than they have Sheffield gear. So they got all the merchandise. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it doesn't course. matter. It doesn't matter what you say, but they have. I don't see any. I mean, we have like maybe one Sheffield jersey at, at, in our house at that point. There we go. I've seen three of each of a kind in our in our in our house. So. All of, our, all of our aunts have Bristol gear, our uncles, and I'm just like, mm, that's tough. There we go. <laughs> I don't see, I don't see, I don't see my aunt Michelle with a with a Sheffield T-shirt. That's all I gotta say. So, yeah, yeah, yeah Aunt Michelle with you a know, fly stash like that. No, men lie, women lie, stats don't. <laughs> <laughs> and neither does merchandise. Neither does merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, could, could you ever see? I, I know you've obviously spent this second year now playing on different teams. For sure. You played together the whole way through your career, growing up and you know up into the pros. Could you ever see a scenario where you could both end up back on the same team one day? Yeah, I mean we we're, were. Almost realistically, it almost happened. Like we were both gonna be playing for the Flyers um, last year, but and like I, we had a conversation. I was just like, my brother literally said, like, if I sign for Flyers right now, then it's up. We're we're gonna be playing together. But um, I was just coming out of my club with with the uh, German in Germany, and so my agent was in negotiation. I was like, ah, I don't wanna. I'm still talking. They're waiting to get like a final. They're still like being pretty flexible with me right now, so I don't know yet. I don't know yet, and so ended up what ultimately ended up happening is that like uh, they gave me a, a number, and I was like, ah, well, okay, that's cool. And then Bristol gave me a number. I'm okay, well, I'm gonna go to Bristol. But by the time I was ready, uh, Sheffield had kind of offered my brother, and yeah. so he wanted to. He's ready to move on, and then um, and there's some other stuff involved with that. I won't out. To, yeah, there's some other stuff involved with that. But, um, but tell, us, tell us later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the thing, though. Like with basketball, it is a business. So it people, is a business. It's like at the any end of the other day. job, like any other job in the working world, if someone's being offered more money to go somewhere else, then you have to take a promotion. Like it's it's, yeah. it's part of the the working world. So you know it happens in sport as well, and we see that happen in sport. So yeah. you know they, you can't. Um, like, I see a lot of fans, and I've been like, "Oh, this player is not loyal to the club." Yeah, you can. Do you know what I mean? you especially, can't do that. and I think especially if uh, when you're looking at, I think it's even more so for overseas athletes because they're not here. They're, they're not. This isn't. Mm. I mean, for a lot of people, like they're not realistically thinking about living abroad overseas. This is just like they're just here for a job, and so 
these they have they really have no i mean there's some you know there are a couple cases like where you know even like my brother you look at him for instance like where he played here for three years so maybe he, he's very fond of the city but the reality is like these people don't live here and in a lot of cases they don't plan on staying there long term so to think that to have uh, this idea that, oh, yeah, well, you're supposed to be with the team. Like, that's great. Maybe if you're born here. I can see that. I can see that if you, like, you, you know, if I, I was an American, I was, like, you know, if I'm playing, like, for the, the Knicks or something like that, I played there, grew there, blah, 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 and then you just leave because, you know. But at the end of the day, these people don't even live here. They're just here just for basketball. That's the only thing that's really realistically tying them to that city. And so um, it's to think that. Or just hold that, have hold them accountable like that. It's just not very fair. So yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe one day we could see you both back together. Yeah, yeah. On that, the same that, team. Yeah, maybe, that would be... maybe in a Bristol Flyers uniform. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> it's tricky. You're both very, very similar players, but I think one of you's got a prettier free throw technique than the other one. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> you knew what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> um, Malcolm, I, uh, anyone that knows you knows that you're very active on social media. Uh, maybe not Twitter as much, but you're very active on Twitter, uh, on Instagram even. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the ones <laughs> you are active on is TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Is, was that like a lockdown project for you? Did you sign yeah, up like, yeah. up on that during COVID and then sort yeah, of stuck around? Yeah, locked. It, uh, uh, COVID COVID years were, were were interesting year, but yeah, that was just kind of. I mean, I wasn't really going out. Or I couldn't go out. Um, couldn't really really be out the house or socialize with my friends in that way because of you know rules and regulations especially in germany germany they sh- i mean i was living vicariously i won't out people because i don't want to get in trouble but i was living vicariously through some people who i knew lived in england and bristol and every time i look up it's a house party here it's a <laughs> this down a third and i'm just like i'm just in i couldn't even get a haircut in germany like it was it was chopped cheese and so um so yeah so then i was just finding ways to free in my free time it's like well there's this app called TikTok and they're and you hopped on it and the rest, on is history. It and the rest is history <laughs> where can where can people follow you on TikTok what's your handle you search your name yeah my handle is uh, Malcolm Delpesh just first like full first and last name so we've got a couple of uh, oh, TikToks Lord. that we uh, kind of flagged here the first one <laughs> is, a, is a screenshot it's just a still image um, oh, and it was go. one that you kind of put uh, I think it was about a year ago I think it was when you were playing for us last year mm-hmm. and essentially it's the one with the audio you can see it here <laughs> on the screen <laughs> love uh, that when coach says you need to control your emotions better but he literally flipped out on you in front of everyone and made you run a suicide for missing a box out during yesterday's <laughs> practice. Uh, can you explain yourself? No, I'm going to just say, come out and say this, that this was not directed at Coach Kapoos because he doesn't make us run. But I've had played with coaches, like especially when I was in Germany. My coach at the time, he was that type of dude, like get on the line, like you're you're taking the piss and, and he would say something else. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's like he would get on the line, run a suicide, then we're back in the drill again. Uh, Kosuka Pulis, bless him, he, you know, and I hope he never changes his ways, but he, he doesn't really make us run as part of punishment. He'll he'll cuss you out and let you know how he feels <laughs> and like make sure and he'll get that out of you. But uh but yeah he's he's not the he's not he he tries to avoid uh what do they call it? Capital punishment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tough love is a big theme that <laughs> yeah, we get tough across love, the yeah. podcast, I Coach think. Kapoulos is very passionate in that way. And so I, for, for as far as like the lack of cardio punishment goes, I love that about him. That's, that's weird because we see nothing but calm and meekness from Coach Kapoulos on the side. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, I, I swear down, as soon as he's oh, off the court, wait. it's a completely no, different person. I have the funniest video on my phone. Um, I think you showed it to me when we were away in Glasgow of like where the fan was, was mocking him. Oh, yeah. And he just... <laughs> Like stomping, and then the uh, this bald, uh, proper lad guy, just, just a thick man, is just like s- sitting behind him, just like mocking him. <laughs> and it was a Sky game, I remember. Yeah, it was, it was on Sky Sports, and he's just oh, it was just, it was just hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. Coach, coach wasn't in a uh, he wasn't in the greatest of moods in that game. I think yeah, we lost yeah. that game quite heavily. Yeah, we got we got pumped, yeah. But. <laughs> and um, and, and essentially, there was this uh, the camera on Sky cut to a flyer's timeout, and there was a shot of coach like going. You know, pretty uh, not aggressively, but like Nuclear. passionately about you know, <laughs> like going, like, like talking to the players and the guy behind. You could just see him going, just mocking him. It was the funniest thing ever. <laughs> I wish it we had a clip funny. of that. I wish I we did. We will find one. And I we'll have tweet it on out. my phone. I, I have it on my phone. We'll, I'll send it we, to you. We will tweet it out after the podcast, and you guys can uh, can see for yourself. I've got another uh, TikTok I want to flag up yeah, here. Yeah. Um, this one, I mean, you, I think you posted it last year, but a uh, <laughs> a young fourteen year old Malcolm Delpesh uh, doing a very special party trick. Should we take a look? Oh yeah, let's dabble. 
Oh, yeah. There All right, guys, I'm about to post the full original video and audio. Um, but I just have to warn you, just brace yourself for the 14-year-old nerd boy. <laughs> that is me. Here All we right. go. Go easy on me in the comment section. <laughs> okay, this is the test. <laughs> see, this is regular toothbrush, no string test or anything. This is the test to see if <laughs> I can keep this going. No, that's tough. Okay. <laughs> oh boy! At the time, I thought it was nice. I was. There you have it. It's actually possible. There you go. Actually possible. There you have it. Uh, the toothbrush trick. What was going through your head when you posted that video, by the way? Oh man, this was so like I wasn't even active, very active on uh, social media at that age. I think this was, I posted this to my Facebook. And so I think uh, I forget where I saw I just saw this video or something like that and I was at, I was in middle school with um with one of my boys his name's Seth and uh, we we were just like oh yeah this is cool I bet you can't try it and I was like oh yeah I'm gonna try it when I'm home and so <laughs> this is really directed at my boy Seth and so I did that I did it and um yeah it was yeah it's just super cringe well, looking back it was just super cringe and uh yeah but <laughs> i tried it again i when i was in germany i tried the video again because that, that's where i posted the video i was in germany with my moonster club yeah and so and then I, the, the magic's still there in it so yeah. well for those listening to the podcast who didn't see the video essentially you had a toothbrush yeah and you were flinging it in circles around your yeah, finger yeah um and the, i think the audio was like uh, with that girl sue singing or whatever and she just like uh <laughs> uh t- Nah, 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 nah. Ah, I forget. I forget the. All, what Come on, the, sing it out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I'll, I'll, I'll spare you guys who are just listening. But uh, but uh, no, waking up in the morning. Nah, 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 nah. Oh yeah, I can't wait to get better. That's right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Another one. Yeah. Another so one. that was and this was like a whole trend of just like posting embarrassing throwbacks, and so that's that's why I posted it. Well, at least on TikTok. Believe it or not, um, we actually have a very special <laughs> surprise <laughs> <brush> right here. <laughs> We got to people, and we need you to show us. Let's have a look. Can you do it now? Still, uh, we'll no see. pressure. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> okay. This is this is be great for the listeners. Hand is so the listeners will love this one. He's spinning it. Oh, oh wait, he's wait. dropped it. Here we go. Take two. Oh, oh, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Was right. my hands are a little bit thicker than they were when I was 14. Me and so. Joel were in the um, office trying it earlier. I've got another one here. We're gonna try. Oh, hey! <laughs> it's like you practice, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you had to practice. I'm sealing a thunder yeah. there, bro. Yeah, no, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Here we go. Only you'll only get this on the Bristol Flyers <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Premium content. Premium content. Premium content, right there. Um, <laughs> that, that is incredible. That went really well. <laughs> that was the best I've ever done it, by the way. Hey, so. hey with the lights on, she came to play. I yeah, love it. I absolutely it. love it. Um, Malcolm, we can't not have you on the podcast without talking about you, uh, your appearance in the movie Hustle. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was obviously immaculate. Just come out um, on Netflix last few weeks or so, or last couple of months, yeah. um, starring Adam Sandler. Um, if you haven't seen it, go watch it on Netflix, yep. uh, the movie Hustle. You and your brother are both extras in the film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we we both played in the well. The scene that I played in was in the the sports combine scene, and so and that's just the NBA combine scene. Sorry, not sports combine, but um, in the NBA combine scene, like we're going through the drills and training, and um, when Anthony Edwards are just like they're chatting to to Juan and everything like that. And so, uh, but yeah, it was uh, basically it was bear training just running we were just running through plays so i was basically doing what i do to for a living as far as just like running through plays and stuff like that up and down up and down for like 12 hour days just just oh. bear cardio bear cardio i think that's that was my preseason training honestly <laughs> that was my preseason training and all that for how many seconds were you actually in the film for? i think the scene that I actually that i actually that you could actually see me in there i was only in there for like maybe like 10 seconds <laughs> <laughs> Did you? You must have lost a bit of like muscle then by doing cardio twelve hours a day, or not really? I mean, I was eating. They gave us buffet style, so I was making up everything I was uh, putting out. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, it was. I was definitely in shape. I was in shape for that uh, for that preseason. So, so how did that opportunity come about then, to, for you to be an extra? So it was like weird because I mean the the, the NBA Combine is actually shot at the Delaware eighty seven centers, which is. 
what seven minutes from my house and so it's uh oh. yeah yeah so like that whole scene is filmed and it's fi the whole film everything was filmed in philadelphia basically outside of like when they went abroad to spain and i think they filmed a scene in atlanta as well but um a lot of the bulk of it was in philadelphia and so i was abroad i remember i was still in germany at the time and then <clears throat> one of my i don't even know how he this dude found it but uh his name's maka or we call him maka and uh, he just sent me this post. He's like, oh, yeah, we're looking for professional basketball players, da 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 And, um, you know, come through, come to the, Del the Philadelphia for this, for the shooting of this film, or just like the tryouts, sorry. And so, and I saw that, I was like, okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. And then right before I, I went home, one of my friends who, like, lives in, she lives in New York right now, she sent me the same thing. She's like, yo, you guys should definitely do it. And I was like, and then I read the fine print. And I saw that it's in Philadelphia. It's like right around the corner. I was like, oh, yeah, it's up. And I sent it to my brother. And he said, oh, yeah, we're going to do it. And so, you know, we, so we go to the, the, the Sixers field house. And it's basically just like a long line. It's like over 300 people trying to just trying on. There's like different, there's professionals, then there's college, and then there's the, the youth, like middle, like middle school age. And so, and I'm just like, oh, this is long. And I'm just like, oh, there's no way. I mean, there's no way we're going to get in, but we're here. We might as well just see what happens. So then we get in there, and as we get up to the front, they take our information, and then they're like, okay, so what's going to happen is that we're going to play, like, a, just a three-on-three -three tournament, and it's, uh, it's just, like, for two minutes. And so we get there, and we play a three-on-three -three game, and so one of the things that they say before we start playing, they're like, we're not necessarily, like, if you dunk on somebody, like, that's cool, but we're not looking for athletes we're looking for players with the look and so um so then we did it and then they said like yeah we want you to and ironically the one of the guys who the guy who the this guy's name is sean but um the guy who was actually in charge of, like he kind of talked to me my brother he said yeah we're gonna keep you guys in mind blah 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 he was like he actually played for sheffield sharks oh wow for like a Whoa. year but yeah yeah we'd, we'd be told him, like, yeah we're playing overseas or england I'd, I'd, oh yeah i played in england uh, forget his last name, but uh, but yeah, he played basketball for a year, and then he ended up he moved he did like a he moved to like the movie advertisement side, and now he's actually he actually co-directed not co-directed he co like a, a yeah I guess co-directed the movie with Adam Sandler and stuff like that. He was in charge of like working through it, making sure all of us were going through our plays and stuff like that, sticking through the strip and all that fun stuff. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, small yeah, world, yeah. isn't it? Basketball yeah, yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it did was, you dunk on anyone in the three on three? Uh, no, I got dunked on and so <laughs> i was gonna say i, well, I was gonna get around no no to that no not of, not in the three on three not in the uh, three and three no i think i'm talking about okay i'm talking about the scene the actual, on the scene the, yeah so in the actual scene that you are in you can see yourself getting dunked on by anthony edwards at the minnesota Timberwolves. yeah yeah it was tough well it was, it was, <laughs> honestly i'm not gonna lie because it, this and this is like i, I think i grain not just a greater respect for anthony edwards because at that point i, I mean I, I, I thought he was a great player but now I'm just like, and I'm like watching him, and this is, I'm gonna speak, I'm gonna even gonna, I'm gonna go even broader than this. It's just like, when I saw Anthony Edwards, you know, you see him, he's like, he, I think he's like 6'6", six, six, and so he's, I'm taller than him, and he's still like a, a stocky dude. But I'm thinking NBA player, blah, blah, blah. This dude, and I like every, every the NBA player players, him and Juan would like come in, and like basically they just do whatever they want. They just come in, because they are not, first things first, they're not risking their bodies for this movie. And so they have everyone has like three doubles apiece. They have three doubles who can just do whatever they want. And uh, but so like during every time the ref the the director would be like cut, they're gonna be like they just get everyone just passes them the ball. Everyone just rebounds for them. No no one else touches the ball except for these two. <laughs> and they're just shooting. These dudes are just not missing. So I'm just like oh snap he's like that. And so, but on the scene where I got dunked on, the day I remember like I'll never forget it. This dude came in like we've already been training going up and down for about like. 30 45 minutes so i'm already kind of just like all right i'm tired like i'm eating my eating my food on the side this dude came in with some slippers and some sweatpants and a hoodie his manager is walking alongside of him like carrying his bags and stuff like that he says hi to adam this that and the third and then he comes in just wipes his sneakers two times and then the direct the director just goes to him he's just like so what you got to do is just say you got to come in and you're going to, he's going to throw you an alley-oop and then you're just going to dunk it. <laughs> <laughs> this dude, one take, this dude's cold, mind you. He's cold. He hasn't even warmed up, hasn't stressed or anything. Just come, maybe he did. Maybe he just coming for, I don't know, maybe he might have come for a workout. So I'll, I'll say that. Maybe it's that. This dude just came in and just dunked it. Like windmill, dunk. <laughs> one take. And he's okay, yeah, yeah, we're good. I'm just like, I don't know a lot of people personally. 
Like, I don't know a lot of people that, is, that could just come in and just effortlessly just, just windmill dunk, like, out of slippers, and then we on to the next next scene. <laughs> were, you, were you told you to, like, half try or just kind of no, fully make try? It, or make, it look, make it look realistic. At the end of the day, like, because like I said, we're not risking their, their – these are multi-million dollar players, so – you know, just come in, make sure. Because at the end of the day, if he goes down, chances are it's coming out of someone's pocket, and it's mm. not going to be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's coming out of somebody's pocket. So they're saying just like, just you know, get, make it look realistic, but get out of his way. You know, it's because the angle, because uh, the camera angles, they're they're adjusted, they're aimed in their way, like where it looks like he's on top of you just dunking it. Yeah. So they made that very clear that you know you don't actually have to like get over him. Like the ang- the cameras will take care of it. And so he did his one take, and then they had his extras who do the, all the extra other takes. So during that scene, like where he dunked it or whatever, like there are a couple of shots like where it's not just him. It's then, but they have Anthony ah, Edwards finishing it. You know what I'm saying? So, I see. so yeah, yeah. The guys are just masterful at what they do. It's just yeah, they can make you make you see whatever you want to see. <laughs> what about um, what about Adam Sandler? What's he like? You get a chance to speak to him? I'm convinced he does. I'm convinced he doesn't act. Like he just really just does what he would. He thinks about what would I do in a situation. And then just acts accordingly, you know what I'm saying? And so he puts himself in the shoes, and then it just moves. Because like when you see him in real life, that's just who he is. Like, and I think you look. I've, I think about all the movies that I've seen from Adam Sandler. He kind of, I mean, I'm, I hope this doesn't come across as if I'm trying to take a jab at him, but he kind of acts the same way in a lot of his movies. And so I'm um, think he just he just is himself, which is like amazing because. He's generated so much money just being himself in it. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that also, apart from that, he's also, he loves basketball. Everything that, that you've seen on social media about him and his getting love for the game is very true. Like, he, like, I, like he'll just be shooting around, just shooting around with all his friends. And, like, uh, whenever uh, the player, we had downtime, he'd just be shooting with those players. And he'd be, like, throwing all these behind the back, behind the head passes and all that other stuff. Like, That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He threw me an alley oop. He threw a couple players. Like uh, this dude played for Ball is Life. Um, I think his name is God Given Town on Instagram. But like he just threw him an alley oop and he's dunking it. I'm just like, yeah, this dude's just. He just loves. He's definitely like a men's league champ. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he's not. He's not particularly athletic or shifty or whatever. But he's just lo- a huge fan of the game and he and he knows how to play. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, if you ever get a chance to uh, watch Hustle on Netflix, uh, skip to the part where uh, the NBA draft combine scene is, and you can watch Malcolm Delpesh getting dunked on <laughs> by Anthony Edwards. <laughs> for free. <laughs> well, not for free. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. about the camera angles. He's dunked next to Yeah, he dunked okay. next to yeah, Let's be clear. You didn't actually dunk on me. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, Malcolm, you've done uh, you've done movies in your you know, off-season. What's next for your off-court career? Are you looking at doing reality TV? <laughs> seen, seen people like Obi Soko go on Love yeah, Island. Yeah, fancy yeah. a bit of Love Island? Yeah, I run, uh, yeah. We, I wanted to... Uh, yeah, I mean, quite to be honest. Did I, you actually? I was this close to actually going through with... Uh, so, like, there was, like, the spinoff of Love Island. It was being filmed in the U.S. And so... Um, it's kind of like this whole like dating thing and oh, very much like Love Island and like it's the same producers who did Love Island they're doing this show and so uh, so yeah we were they wanted twins and they wanted uh, me and my brother to like come out and like we did like the zoom we did like three zoom interviews with the powers that be and like oh yeah we love your energy and like we we, we zoom called them while we were in in England we and my brother stayed in England for most of the summer and so but yeah but we were talking to them through zoom and like we had three interviews like yeah we love you like we want to fly you out to la and all this other stuff and um but it didn't work out because at that point my brother was uh and my brother was in a committed relationship and so he did he was very honest with with his girlfriend at the time and um, well, i like to, i like to think so oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so, so he he kind of told her what what the situation was and uh, what was going on and to be fair to the producers uh and like uh, they did try to like they try to cater the show to make it the most uh mutually beneficial so like oh yeah maybe we can do it like we're you know we're testing testing their 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 relationship and her girlfriend was having none of it <laughs> yeah yeah so it was yeah it was very much chopped cheese and so like it didn't work out and so they you know we i did talk to it was like yo maybe it can just be me but they already, they already had like their single people it was supposed the uh, twins were supposed to be like this X Factor kind of shift in um, the game show, whatever it is. 
and so they really they really just needed twins and so yeah they they were very i mean they tried to make it flexible for us and like i said they really want that they, they said all we just need to do is one psych evaluation and then they wanted to fly us out to la and just to meet the, the producers in person do a couple talks and get some content and then they would have during October, we would have. I probably yes. Yeah, so I would have been. I would have been in. L, I would have been shooting the the show, right now, just for like maybe two three weeks. But um. But yeah, this didn't work out. But it you know it was a. Uh it was nice. It was wow. a nice thought. <laughs> oh, well, I was only throwing that out as a bit of an off-the-cuff comment, but actually, if you are flying from Love Island, anyone from ITV is listening to this uh, podcast and fancies getting Malcolm Del Pesce on the next series of Love yeah, Island, yeah, then yeah, uh, yeah. just, you know, you can tweet us at Bristol Flyers and we'll make it happen. You should have done a little Lindsay Lohan, the parent trap vibe, where you run and get changed quickly and then you're yeah, playing right, you and your <laughs> brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was, yeah, you know, I was looking through my, my Instagram, like, is there anyone I could pass for fraternal twin or identical twin? But no, nah, no, nah, it didn't work out. But, you know, like I said, I'm, not, I'm grateful and I'm obviously and I told my brother straight up I'm just like bro like at the end of the day this is between like I care about your decisions I want you to be happy at the end of the day like you know do your thing and so he he chose his girlfriend and that's I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that well that's awesome um well, I'm aware we're very pushing for time. We haven't done, even got to quick fire questions yet. We're, yeah, uh, yeah, so we yeah, can literally yeah. talk here all day. Uh, but shall we get to uh, our quick fire questions? Uh, Sam, let's have the. Oh, he's done it already. Sorry, I thought you were going to just go straight into it. <laughs> Tough. <laughs> big, big production here. <laughs> big production, as you can tell. Um, obviously, we had uh, Leslie Smith on last week doing yeah. quick fire questions. He answered as many questions as he could about himself in 30 seconds. I disagree. I don't think he answered <laughs> as many did as it. he could. <laughs> hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell That's you right so now. He, I'll tell you right now. He's called five. Um, so uh, you have five to beat. All right, um, let's do it. Are we ready? Uh, you have thirty seconds, starting from now. What's your favorite shoes to hoop in? Uh, LeBron's twelve twenties. Would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? Uh, fly. What's scarier, sharks or clowns? Sharks. If you weren't a basketball player, what would you be doing? Uh, market research. What's your favorite NBA team? Unfortunately, the Lakers. <laughs> What's the one place you want to travel to most? Uh, Greece. Who is the best player on the team? Ooh. <laughs> oh. mm. We'll go with VJ. VJ King. How many was that, Sam? Were no, you counting that one? I was. In fact, that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Yeah. We, we beat five, so that's uh, <laughs> that is always a good thing. Um, we beat five. <laughs> <laughs> that was the score to beat. I mean, five and thirty seconds. It was uh, it was pretty slow. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so congratulations, uh, Malk. You are the leader now in our quick fire question segment. Yeah. Yeah. The the best player to see. I had to think about that one. I wanted to be thoughtful about that one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Bristol Flyers podcast. All right, Sam, let's get to uh, around the news, uh, the news around the league uh, this week. We'll make this super quick because there wasn't actually too much going on around the league. However, uh, before the game on Friday, uh, who was it? Newcastle Eagles. Flyers with Newcastle Eagles. So both teams get out onto the court. Uh, we look at the other end of the court and there's Denzel Ubiaro standing there unannounced and they announced him at quarter past seven. <laughs> and I know how you feel about unannounced players, Joel. Well, we talked about it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, oh, it sounds going to turn the lights up back up to uh, to blue. There we go. Yeah, that's what we, uh, we talked about it on the podcast um, last week. Um, well, a couple of weeks ago, actually. Teams announcing players late. I'm not a massive fan of it. People will say, like, oh, we're waiting for clearance, we're waiting for clearance, etc. You can still announce the player before they've got their clearance. Just put in the press release, pending clearance. Yeah. I think also we've talked about the league trying to get, um, you know, growing as a, as a professional league. The, the players are getting better, the teams are getting better. But also, like, you, you're you really good um, at sort of, like, announcing players in a big fashion, like making a big deal of it. And so, if, you know, if we want to see sort of the, the, the league growing uh, in, in all areas, like, that is a really good opportunity for their socials to improve as well. Do you know what I mean? Well, it, I, we have the most fun on social with doing player announcements that you can get the most creative content out there it's a chance to get your brand out there and also for the player if it's a really big name coming into your team it's a really great chance to be shouting about that and then to be hiding that in a press release at quarter past seven on a game day when they're only playing like 40 seconds in a game like just don't play it yeah. Like, is that, like, why are you playing in 40 seconds and then just um, I think he played longer on the game on Sunday I think 10 minutes but that was when the game was already wrapped up yeah. so uh, I mean it's good that Denzel Ubiara is now staying in the league playing 
with the Newcastle Eagles. So, uh, so that was the first uh, big news of the week. You got uh, that off your chest, Joey. Yeah, yeah, I got that. <laughs> your man was feeling petty. I got that off. My, I got that off my chest. I was like, hey, yo. I was like, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. I was sat in Newcastle. I was about to do my tweets. I opened my laptop, about to crack on, open up live stats, I looked down the stat sheet. And there's a uh, number eight, Denzel Uviaro sat there. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Looked up, and there he was, just warming up. Looked at their socials, nothing announced. So, hey, if you're going to announce a player, note to, memo to all the BBL teams, if you're going to announce a player, uh, please announce it with some time. <laughs> <laughs> just some time. Just please. And if the league, if, if you can't get them, if, if they're only just registered just before tip-off, then the league should step in and say, look, they can't play until the week after, until they're fully announced. They have to give, like, I don't know, 24 hours notice, 48 hours notice before a thing. They have to be cleared and reg registered, etc., and announced before the game. Uh, and if clubs don't want to do it, maybe the league puts it on their website or something like that. Yep. Uh, also around the league, uh, Plymouth City Patriots have announced that they are going to be remaining at the pavilions for the rest of the season. Now, there was talk of them moving yeah, away mid-season to a yeah. new venue. Um, however, they are going to be uh, there for the rest of the season, which is good news because um, I know they've had uh, trouble with their arena, their venue over the past. Um, it's been a rivalry on the court, but you don't want to see them struggling. Like you, you want the rivalry to continue for years and years to come. Yeah. So that is really good news for them that they've got a good venue uh, to be playing in uh, for the rest of the season at least yeah agreed uh, Malcolm you've played at the pavilions uh, what is your like, what, what's it like for players playing at the pavilions because it's quite a unique venue isn't it yeah I mean it, I'm gonna lie I'm not gonna lie I kind of like their setup I mean it's very I think it's like it's like an opera or a, a yeah, proper like a theater, auditorium like a theater, yeah proper it? theater so I do what I th one of the things I like is that like the courts load up and then Everything else is kind of darkness, and I don't think that that's not by mistake. And so I think that it's it's a very unique it's a very unique unique setup. And so because of that, it's it's dope. And so having all the fans on one side, and it's just like you kind of just especially if you're an away team, I think you're most people probably used from getting some of that energy from both ends of both sides of the of the court. But just having all the energy on one side, um, it can be a little bit jarring. Um, honestly, the biggest thing I don't like about it, their setup, is their speakers that they have sitting behind our bench. Like, that's just ridiculous. Because they blast music. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, I'd rather have the fans in my ear than just... Because the music, it's like, it's not even good music. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's my biggest complaint. Oh, yeah, it can get noisy in there. And I imagine the floor is not good for you guys either with your knees. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. So that's and that's another thing. I mean, their flooring is a little bit leaves much to be desired. But um, as far as the overall setup, as like from aesthetics point of view and, you know, when you look at the game dynamics from like a player versus spectator and the the benefits of be having that home court advantage that that setup can have, I think it's great. And I think me being a competitor, I kind of like that setup for them. So, absolutely. Uh, other news going around the league: uh, London Lions are in Euro Cup action tonight. All their games are now being uh, broadcast on BT Sport. So good to have a new uh, broadcast partner involved with British basketball, helping put us on the map. Uh, they're playing Gran Canaria tonight, so wish them best of luck. Uh, we do not wish them best of luck when we play them next Sunday. Yes, <laughs> 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 campus. <laughs> Um, so yeah, select games on uh, BT Sport and Red Button service as well. Uh, so that is great news for around the league. Um, one more item of news around the league this past week: Thomas Bell being named in Team of the Week. Uh, oh he had a uh, a huge game uh, for Flyers against Cheshire Phoenix: 27 points, eight rebounds, three steals, two assists, nine for 13 shooting from the field, four for seven from downtown. Uh, it was a pretty much a case of get the ball to TB and just get out of the way, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. Oh my days! Yeah, he was a uh, very much. He was a critical uh, piece for us, and we needed we needed that. I think that um, one thing about great about Thomas Ball, outside of just the his effect on offense, that he's missed or do it all. Like he'll, if you want to stop defensively, like he can guard. I would honestly say, in some cases, one through five. Um, like he's a defensive specialist. He's aggressive. He has those really long arms. Yes, he does. <laughs> um, and then he's an excellent. Excellent finisher around the basket. I mean, some guys will, you know, people will comment, will comment like how, I guess, unorthodox his, uh, his, uh, his game is because he's not like super shifty. Like, he's not like when you think of uh, a scorer, you think of like, I guess, more like a, I hate to say this, we think of like a Marcus Evans, kind of just like super shifty and getting down, able to get down the hill. 
Um, or let's say Jelani. We'll say think of <laughs> Jelani. Yeah, yeah. Who's so, Mark Evans? I know you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, <laughs> but you think of like Jelani, who's like able to super shifty, just like get down the hill. But like he's very much from like very slower, very much more calculated. He's his game is just so much more calculated. Uh, he doesn't have like a he doesn't play with like a super quick first step. But like he gets to wherever he wants to. Like he just gets there, and then his ability to finish around the basket is just. Very, very, very impressive. Well, that spin move uh, was it in overtime on um, was it on Will Neighbor where yeah. he comes in, he spins around the weird lefty, just yeah, just, yeah, he just hooks yeah. In. It it's just and I think it? and it doesn't. But the thing is, like for some people, um, like you, you might see someone else make a play like that, and you'll say like, oh, like that's just a lucky finish. But this is just what he does. Mm-hmm. Like he just, he just, his touch is just phenomenal. Yeah. Um, big doubleheader this weekend. Uh, flies away to Leicester Riders. We're back home on Saturday. We've got Caledonia Gladiators uh, at the SGS Wise Campus. Last few tickets remaining. So if you're looking to get your tickets, go to headbristolflyers.co.uk. I think there's around 50 or 40 tickets left for that one. Um, they're selling quick, as they always do. Uh, so make sure you go to uh, the website to grab yours now ahead of the weekend. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, also this weekend, we have got these to hand out. Uh, these are new this season. They are You can get these for free at SGS. Uh, they open up into a lovely little booklet, as you can see here on the video version of the podcast. Uh, they've got little spots on the right-hand side for all the players to sign after the games. The left-hand side has a, uh, a barcode you can scan on your phone to... Uh, sync all the fixtures to your calendar, which is fantastic, and you can grab yours for free. So um, after the game, the guys will be signing these uh, at the Wise Campus on Saturday. Did they get your best side, Malcolm? <laughs> Malcolm just checking out the picture. He's making sure yeah, that he like uh, that. he looks good. He, it, I like that. Does Picasso. that have Does that have your uh, the seal of approval, Malcolm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll patent that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, right, shall we get on to uh, this week's word of the week? <laughs> Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Let's do that one more time. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. Okay, so uh, we asked everyone to send in their word of the week for the Caledonia Gladiators uh, game on Saturday. Yeah. We had loads of uh, loads of suggestions, so shout out to you guys at home for sending them in. We had some great ones uh, on there. We we couldn't think of one from all the great suggestions, so we've actually come up with a great idea for uh, fate to decide what word becomes this week's word of the week. So without further ado, I'm going to go grab this uh, prop we've got here. Uh, Sam, shall we introduce the wheel? The wheel! The wheel! wheel. wheel. Here it is. (laughs) Bruh. <laughs> tough. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. Uh, we got a wheel here. Is it upright? Yeah, it's kind of upright. It's kind of uh, half fallen over here. Hang on. I'm gonna hold it. Oh, Sam, it's, it's kind of fallen off. So Sam's gonna hold the wheel. Uh, we got. Some, <laughs> there you go. That worked. That worked well. Uh, we've got some great words here. We've got what? Potato. We have got spicy. We have got pants. Uh, stethoscope, spooky, scat gang. That was from Corey. Uh, the, all these <laughs> words are words that we, uh, you know, that you suggested to add into word of the week. The goal is whichever word it lands on at the top here, uh, we will say. If you hold it down a bit lower, Sam, there we oh, go. Sorry. Uh, if you, if whichever word it lands on will be this week's word of the week, I'll have to squeeze that into the commentary for the game against Caledonia Gladiators. Shall we give this weird a spin, Sam? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh, it's moist. <laughs> that is, oh no. the word is moist. <laughs> that was a terrible word. You can't was, ever was... use the word moist in when you're describing food. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's game is being described as moist on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, this isn't actually going to... Uh, hang on, I'm going to put this over here because uh, our wheel is... Uh, we just broken the wheel on the podcast. <laughs> it worked well in the rehearsal. Well, it was fine, wasn't it? But uh, here we go. First and last use of the wheel, I think. <laughs> well, there we go. Moist is your word of the week. I'm going to try and squeeze that into commentary for this Saturday's game against Caledonia Glads. This is the Bristol Flyers podcast. 
Uh, we have to get to some questions from the mailbag to wrap things up, Malcolm. Uh, right, we asked fans to send in all of their questions to you. Uh, the best ones we've picked here, we will go through them uh, right here on the podcast. Uh, Sam, have you got the first question you want to read out? I do. Now, we don't have loads of time, so I need you to be like yeah, quick yeah, answers. Yeah, yeah. And this is all right. So Rich Barrett on Twitter um, has said, which teammate do you feel that you have the best on-court chemistry with? I think the it would be between Mike or Jelani, honestly, yeah. What about off court chemistry? Ooh. Ooh, it would be Ebo. Yeah, Ebo. I mean, he's not officially on the roster. Ibuka, yeah, Ibuka, yeah, yeah. But like he's not officially on the roster, but we practice with he's at all of our practices. Yeah, this this dude is hilarious. He's a menace, but he's hilarious. I mean, you and Mike with the chemistry we saw last year against Manchester, he had the game-winning shot and you had the game-winning block, yeah, and that yeah. was just beautiful, yeah, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? So Sensational. Yeah. Sensational. Sensational. Word of the week. We should get that for next time. <laughs> yeah, we should <laughs> try and add that to the board, shouldn't we? Um, next question. Nico and family on Instagram, what is your favorite memory of your time here in Europe? Ooh. I guess I guess that can count as like Germany or Bristol, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, are you guys even considered Europe anymore? Brexit? What's up? Uh, but uh, <laughs> we are now a political podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, most memorable time here in Europe, it would probably say when I went to Berlin. Yeah, that was that was a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Berlin, good trip. You ever been to Berlin, Sam? No, I will. Though. It's on the list. I've never been either, so... Maybe, add, we'll, maybe we'll get together. Yeah, we'll add, add for, have some uh, German boudoirs. <laughs> that should be great. So Fallon on Instagram um, wants to know... What oh, it, my gosh. What it, what's it like <laughs> being the worst Uno player on the team? No, nah, that's just untrue. I'm a, no. Whoever said that, they don't know what they're talking about. I know last year you guys were playing a lot of Uno on the bus. Are you still doing that this year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, we've resulted to... Uh, I haven't actually played with them yet, but uh, the guys are playing like an online. They have an app or whatever. And so like they're just connecting on the wi team Wi-Fi on the bus. And so, yeah, that's how they play. There we go. Who needs cards now when you got phones, yeah, eh? Yeah, I personally like to stick to the all-natural, bring the cards. But if they want to play with electronics then i let the kids play <laughs> <laughs> let the kids play uh greg townsend on twitter what was your favorite moment when you put someone on a poster oh i think probably honestly it would be like the yui one i think that one oh was yeah, just, yeah 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 I th it's just it's just so petty just like the ball handoff one but i've had to pick one for bristol um i think the alley-oop that we had against what the manchester uh like it was a it wasn't that yeah i would say that's about it like i got dunked on i mean personally i got dunked on but then i got my lick back when i uh when i might threw that that late alley-oop and i dunked it with two hands and so uh the, yeah that was that was a good one because i was i mean it was effectively that changed the tides of the game at that point what about last year when you dunked on oh, what was his name oh yeah yeah uh like the seven footer from surrey yeah 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 oh yeah yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that was tough Legend Roberto. yeah yeah he had a long that was a long day for him yeah. but you injured him as well didn't you yeah he uh <laughs> i think he went to a and e or something didn't he? yeah he had uh yeah that he got a nice little knot on his forehead and uh so that's that's you hate to see it. and that's the thing about we talked about earlier briefly like you get dunked on and then you get subbed out i mean he, he got subbed out for injury purposes. He got subbed to A and E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, you don't wish harm on anyone, but yeah, tough. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean that's <laughs> disgusting. Uh, yeah, yeah. As Kira Charles say, you hate disgusting. to see it, but you love to see it. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, couple more questions here. Paolo Conchmal from the office at Bristol Sport. Uh, what's your favorite pre-game song? <sighs> pre-game song. I would say Diamonds Dancing by a uh, future and drake good choice yeah, yeah yeah do you have like a is there anyone in the locker room that's like a locker room dj this year like who's who's in charge of the pre-game music it's in the dressing room either it's either vj or ibuka those two are generally the the music connoisseurs is there is there taste is there taste uh got good consensus around the team is that good yeah i think yeah their music is generally well received by everyone i mean sometimes i have put my headphones in but um yeah, for the most part. Yeah, nothing too outrageous. I won't, I won't roast them. <laughs> I, I put the music on, obviously, in the arena, and I get a lot of hate from the players because they don't like my yeah, choices. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I mean, we, we, we appreciate the work you do. Hey, family <laughs> sport. You've got to cater to the whole family it's for here. the fans, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they all got their headphones on during pre-game. Yeah, I'm saying, I, I just want to bring my Bluetooth headphones. Look. 
Leave me alone, all right? <laughs> we got, we got, tough. Well, tough. We've got one last question for you. Matt from BBL Daily, he wants to know, what's an embarrassing story from growing up we can use against your brother at the next Del Pesh derby? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, this will be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a couple. Um... I always remember that story where was it him who wore the two pairs of shorts at the I think it was before you came, he wore the two pairs or was it you that wore the two pairs of shorts at Surrey Scorches Away? I think it was him. We did it on the podcast. I can't relate that to that story. one. I never he kept I that, think if you he listen, kept that one secret for me. I didn't <laughs> <laughs> If you listen to the podcast, the I think you could go back a few podcasts on the feed to the back of the team bus one. There's a funny story about Marcus Delpesh wearing two pairs of shorts at Surrey Scorches Away. What, and stealing someone else's pair. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> someone didn't have a pair of shorts and yes. everyone was like, Where's my shorts? And then uh, Marcus realised he had two pairs of shorts on that's tough that's tough <laughs> have you got anything else sort of juicy similar sign of kind of level uh, uh that we can roast him next del pesh derby uh off the top of my head that's like worth mentioning well that's yeah that we're allowed to talk about yeah we're allowed to talk about i think that's because that, that's that's like key. when you bring that up i'm just like i'm thinking of everything else but off the top of my head uh Nah, I mean, I, I saw Mr. Dunk the other game, but I mean, we all missed oh. buckets. But Look yeah. at that. He's standing up for, for his brother. <laughs> Not on purpose, <laughs> but I just can't think of anything uh, off the top of my head at the moment. Did you ever go in each other's classes growing up because of some reason one of you was better yeah, than Matt's or something? Yeah, well, we just, just because, just to mess around. And uh, it, we did that on the day we had to test, and that didn't work out very well. <laughs> so that was tough. But, um, <laughs> but yeah. The old switcheroo. Yeah. Um, Malga, we're going to wrap things up there on the, uh, the Bristol Flyers podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this week's episode. Yeah, thanks for the invite, Joel. This is great. It's been a lot. Of, had a lot of fun just like chopping it up with you guys. Yeah, it was really good fun. I thought. Who, who should we get on next? We're looking to pick on someone for next week. Who should we bring on next week? Honestly, I'd say get Brandon or I think Brandon or TB would be would be some good well, content. Well, we we will be. Uh, sending I would love to see Brandon just because I just want to see him just like just <laughs> chopping it up, just like you know, just being able to talk casually. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to it. We're going to try and get around to all the players at some point this season. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every single Wednesday on the uh, podcast feed, you can catch us, uh, Bristol Flyers podcast. Do subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, watch us on YouTube, all those podcasty things. But until then, we will see you this time next week. We'll see you later.